faculty member at the College of uh, General Studies at Boston University, as well as Brian Foster, who took up carving and uh, sculpture full-time at the age of 25. Since then, he has become an authority on the, oh God, megalithic works of South America and the perplexing, ancient, elongated, headed people of the area. Goodness gracious me, guys. We need some explanations <laughs> going on here. How are you doing? Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. All right, this is interesting. First and foremost, we have to talk about this that's on, this, on, the, on the table at the moment. What have you got with you? These are exact copies of elongated skulls from the area called Paracas in Peru, yeah? which is on the coast. And this culture died out 2,000 years ago and um, no serious academic study has been done of them since about the 1930s. Sure. So this is something that you, you, you work on. These have been redone to understand them. So these are human skulls. They are. Goodness me. So this is just showing the evolution of man. True. Yeah. I'm glad we don't have heads like that anymore. That's all I can say <laughs> about that. Let's start at the beginning, all right? Because I think you caught me off guard with these on the table. What is the SCA, SCA conference all about? What, what well, do you get really, out of it? what it is is looking at the origins of civilization, the origins of humanity, what it really means to be a civilized person, where did our culture begin? And what we're finding is that civilization began at a much earlier stage than archaeologists and historians, I'm an academic that my academic colleagues assumed initially. Generally, it's been assumed that civilization started about 3,500, 4,000 BC. Yeah. We're now finding that civilization actually goes back to the end of the last ice age, some 12,000 years ago, about 10,000 BC. This began with my work in Egypt on the Sphinx and redating the Sphinx of Egypt, the yeah. Great Sphinx, but now we're finding other evidence in many other countries, for instance, Gebekli Tepe, the site in southeastern Turkey, that goes back to the end of the last ice age. So we're finding that humanity is much deeper, goes back much further, and has a much greater history than we ever imagined. Amazing. What does it mean for us now? I mean, what messages do these discoveries hold for modern civilization? Well, something that's very important is what we are now finding based on the evidence is that civilization immersed, and I mean very sophisticated technological civilization. They were building incredible stone monuments and, you know, had a very well-developed society before the end of the last ice age, about 10,000 BC, but all the geological evidence, I'm a geologist, indicates that the ice age ended very abruptly. Yeah. We're now piecing together that there were major solar outbursts, catastrophic changes on Earth. This wiped out these early civilizations, essentially set humanity back into a dark age for thousands of years before civilization reemerged. And I don't want to be a scaremonger, yeah. but we are now finding that this could happen again. A truism of geology is if it happened in the past, it could happen again in the future. And there's been a lot of astrophysical studies now of the sun and solar activity, and the sun is starting to ramp up. It's starting to go into apparently a period mm -hmm. of volatility when we could have something occur again, yeah. basically solar outbursts that wiped out this previous round of civilization, we had better prepare for the future. So for me, it's not just voyeuristic. It's not just a matter of looking at past civilization saying, oh, that's very interesting. I think there are real lessons to be learned yeah. um, as we go into the future. That's amazing. I mean, so it's, so that's, uh, that's at the crux of all of this, is that we need to know what happened back then so that exactly. we can because try and avoid it happening in the exactly, future. Exactly, because it's sort of one of these cliches that yeah. history repeats itself Absolutely. if we don't... Um, make yeah. preparations if we don't learn from history. Wow. All right, let's, let's go back to now, this, this study that you've been doing. I mean, you've been uh, <coughs> studying these phenomenal elongated human skulls and cranial deformations for some time. Uh, talk to us about them. I mean, what, what, what have been some of the most amazing findings, Brian, that you've done out of this? Well, actually, the uh, conventional uh, academics believe that all cranial deformation or all elongated skulls on the planet were done as a ceremonial practice. Mm. And this happened on every continent, so in Africa as well as Europe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what we're starting to do is do DNA testing, and the DNA testing is starting to insinuate that these, the ancestors of these people 
um, were not exactly homo sapiens as we are. They could have very well been, been a different branch of humanity. And um, academia has not really addressed that at all, as well as the fact that where we find these people, we also find the megalithic structures in a lot of cases. Mm. And what's the relationship between the two of them? I mean, if, obviously you've been studying that. What have you found? Well, basically, that as, as Dr. Robert Schock was saying, is that we're being told that um, civilized humanity more or less arose about maybe 3100 BC, but now we can push back the timeline much farther. And it means that we as humanity are far more complicated and have a much more intriguing history than what uh, we've been taught. Sure. When you come here to South Africa, I mean, when we talk about the cradle of humankind and, and the hominids that have been found there, yes. I mean, let, let's talk about that and put that into the picture for us. Oh, yeah, I think this is a very important point of origins for humanity as a whole. And what we're finding is that humanity is much more diverse than we previously realized. Um, and what I mean by that is many different branches coming out. As I was mentioning, that civilization arose previously, seems to have gone through a decline, gone into a dark age. And what we're finding in part is that some of the traditions, some of the legends that talk about sort of cycles of civilization are different groups of people if I could put it this way, coming and going throughout history, there is some real truth to that. And it's a much more complex picture, the origins and the history of humanity than we previously imagined. It's not just a straight line of, you know, going from primitive them yeah. to modern us without any bumps along the way. We're finding it's much more complex and there's a lot of um, subtleties and intricacies. And we need to learn those to understand where we fit in. Yeah, ongoing work obviously that's being done every single day behind the, behind the scenes that we as, as I suppose just normal humans carry on day to day activity. Yeah. We don't even know about this type of stuff. I exactly. Mean, is there exactly. enough education do you believe out there and, and, and is there enough importance emphasized on the work that you are both no, doing? No, I think this is a type of work that really needs to be made yeah. better known. It needs to be publicized. I hope that people will come to the conference this weekend. Uh, you know, to really learn about what is going on and to expand their minds, to expand their consciousness. The conference is called um, the SCA, Science, Consciousness, and Ancient Civilizations, with good reason because we're looking at all these aspects. And arguably, some of these ancient civilizations had different views, should we say, of life versus different emphasis. And we can learn from that different philosophical modes, if you would. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to look at the broad range of humanity, I believe, as we live in this world that we live in and face future issues. Yeah, you, you mentioned it in one of your previous answers, but let's, let's elaborate a little bit on this, because I mean, this I, I find fascinating. I'm sure so many people do as well. You're best known for your research on the, on the Great Sphinx of Egypt, and, and you found a lot of controversy there. In yes, your I work. have, I have. Tell, tell us a little bit more about okay, this. Okay, I started working on ancient civilizations in Egypt in 1990, I'm a geologist and geophysicist, that's what my PhD is in. I studied the Great Sphinx from a geological point of view. Now at that time, the Egyptologists all agreed that the Sphinx was dated to 2500 BC. What I found was very clear evidence of water weathering, precipitation, rain, on the body of the Sphinx, deeply eroded. This is incompatible with the Sahara Desert, which is a 5,000-year-old desert. Yeah. So immediately, as a geologist, I realized that the Sphinx must go back to an earlier period, an earlier climate, an uh, earlier time. And then I did lots of different analyses. We did su subsurface seismic analysis um, and other types of uh, detailed uh, studies which confirmed that the Sphinx was much older. The original Sphinx was much older. The head has been recarved, so it's not the original head. Mm -hmm. But the Egyptologists and the historians said this was impossible. This cannot be. And they said there must be another civilization. There must be other evidence. So several years went by. In fact, a number of years went by. But now in southeastern Turkey, just north of the Syrian border, there's this fantastic site known as Gebekli Tepe yeah. that's being excavated by the German Archaeological Institute. It dates back to 10,000 BC, yeah. the same time period I was talking about end of the last ice age. And so this is incredibly exciting that you have this, as I said before, earlier cycle of civilization, but 
again, I want to emphasize this, they were wiped out essentially. Wow. They were, it was devastating. With earth changes at the end of the last ice age, you know, they couldn't survive it. Yeah. And came back to the present and future, we live on the same planet earth. This is not a stable planet from a geological sense, the sun is not stable from an astrophysical sense, and we can expect major changes in the future, and there's indications of that happening happening already. So um, this, this global, climate change, global, global warming, warming. It's which not a, it's, it's not just, linked. it's it, what? It's all linked? It's all this linked. All it's linked. Linked. all linked because, yes, there is an anthropogenic, there's a human factor in global warming, but there's very strong evidence that there's also solar activity involved and that there are natural cycles of climate change. I know that as a geologist. Geologists are very familiar with this. So we need to understand the nat natural cycles, how they impact humanity going forward as mm -hmm. well as looking at the past. And right now, again, I don't want to be a fear monger, but we are very sophisticated culture and society. But people are watching television right now. We are electrical culture. We are electronic culture. We are dependent on power systems and grids and satellite communications. If we have a major solar outburst as occurred 12,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age, that would devastate our modern society. Yeah. And Organizations like NASA in the U.S. or the National Academy of Sciences, I'm American, are looking into this seriously. So this is something that, you know, major institutes are taking note of, governments are taking note of, um, that, you know, going forward, we have sure. to be careful. But again, I want to stress we have to learn from the past. Yeah, we ha wow. Okay. Now, um, I think you've got a lot of interest peaked up there. So there's a conference happening. We've already done um, the Cape Town leg of this tour. That's right. It's happening in Johannesburg now at the Witts University uh, on the 5th and 6th of July. At Linder uh, Auditorium. Linder Auditorium. You were saying people should arrive early. Yeah. yeah. The conference actually runs from about 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. People should get there about 9 a.m. to register. The first speaker will come on about 10 o'clock, but we're all there and we're happy to interact with people. One of the beautiful things about coming to a conference like this is not only to hear the presentations, but to get to talk with us personally, to speak yeah. with us personally, interact. So we'll go from about 9 a.m. with registration till about 7 in the evening, both Saturday and Sunday. Excellent. So that's two days, the 5th and the 6th. There are and lots of speakers there, including yourself, Dr. Uh, Robert Shork, and also um, Brian Forster, who's here in studio, who's and, bought these And innovative could we get skulls. the website in? Because people Please can get do. more information. That's www.sca conference, stands for Science, Consciousness, and Ancient Civilizations, sca conference dot co.za. All right, there you go. It's on your screen right now. Write that address down. If you're interested in this, goodness gracious, I, I can't understand why anybody wouldn't be. Um, and also, as I mentioned, Brian Forrester is going to be speaking there. And the topic that he's talking about is why did ancient tribes all over the world use head binding techniques to create elongated heads? What's the answer to that? Well, the basic answer, from if you're able to ask the descendants of, of these people is, is they say number one we think it's aesthetically beautiful number two we think it increases intelligence it was only done amongst the royalty and the most intriguing aspect is they say this is what our ancestors looked like mm -hmm. so again we're probably looking at a lost branch of humanity which has been ignored so far it's incredible thank you gentlemen thank you for coming in thank you for enlightening us that was uh, professor Robert Shork and uh, Brian Foster, who two of the eight speakers who will be at the Science Consciousness and Ancient Civilization Conference this weekend. Uh, that will be happening the 5th and 6th of July at the Witz Linda Auditorium. There's your website address. Have a look at it. Get it. This is going to be a very interesting time held by everyone that attends.